So folks, uh, my name is Sanjay Shah. I deal with a wide variety of livestock engineering issues at NC State. And today I'll be talking about livestock barn exhaust air treatment. Uh, since it's Friday, I'll try to wrap up as soon as I can. I'll try not to go over some of the topics that uh, Dr. Sharara uh, covered. So uh, here's my outline. I'll be providing some background. I'll be talking a little bit about the EPA National Air Emissions Monitoring Study. Then I'll be talking about the exhaust air treatment that's used in uh, the European Union countries. And then I'll wrap up by talking about current exhaust treatment uh, options that might be feasible here in the US. So some background. Uh, if we talk about uh, poultry and swine farm emissions, probably the most important gas is ammonia, and then you have several other odorous gases. Ammonia is environmentally very important. Uh, it impacts the environment. It contributes to haze by forming small particulate matter and also health. And if you talk about odor, it's a combination of ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and several other odorous gases. In the case of poultry house odors, you don't have hydrogen sulfide, whereas in swine, you will have hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, and the other gases. So dust emissions generally are minor from livestock barns, except in some areas where they may have bigger impacts but dust transports odorous gases as well as microbes. And uh, just some in, uh, interesting information, one cubic inch of dust will carry more odorous gases than one cubic inch of poultry house air. And if you want to reduce odor emissions, you should start out by reducing dust emissions. Uh, talking so more about uh, emission impacts, Dr. Sharara talked about all of the lawsuits that uh, the, uh, the pork industry has faced in North Carolina. Uh, they are all being settled. But now we also have anecdotal evidence that uh, poultry house uh, odor complaints are now rising. Poultry farm odor complaints, including from land application, than from swine. Uh, states and localities do have the authority to regulate order, unlike the EPA, which does not. And of course, uh, that raises the concern of uh, poultry order lawsuits. Uh, so far, we haven't had any in North Carolina. Let me talk about several different uh, stages of pollution mitigation, four stages of pollution mitigation. I uh, borrowed this from something that was published some time back. I uh, forget the name of that uh, publication. First one is pre-excretion where we modify the diet, let's say for example, by reducing crude protein to reduce ammonia. The second one is pre-release uh, so that we reduce emissions from the waste by let's say adding acidifiers and Dr. Sharara talked a lot about it. The third one is pre-emission, where we treat the house air so that we can reduce the indoor concentrations as well as emissions. Finally, post-emission or, or exhaust air treatment. This is where I spend most of my time. So let me give you some uh, information about the EPA National Air Emissions Monitoring Study. Uh, the EPA does have the authority to regulate emissions from livestock barns under the Clean Air Act, but it has not used that authority. In 2002, the National Research Council uh, advised the EPA to calculate uh, confined livestock farm emissions, meaning from animals that are confined, which does not include beef. And in 2005, under the air compliance agreement that the EPA had with several commodity groups as well as other environmental groups, uh, the EPA started monitoring emissions using the National Air Emissions Monitoring Study. So 
they monitored 25 farms across the country and they did it for two years. They looked at ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, VOCs, volatile organic compounds, dust, but not odor. And they monitored emissions from both uh, barns as well as um, storage slash treatment facilities, but not from land application sites. Uh, the EPA has since released all of the draft emissions model, excuse me, <coughs> uh, for public comment. So these draft emission models will allow us to calculate emissions, let's say, per pound of bird on a daily basis or on an annual basis. Uh, stakeholder comments are due by the middle of 2023 and by late 2022, the EPA hopes to release all of the finalized models that have addressed all of the stakeholder concerns and comments. Eventually, the EPA wants to develop a web-based tool that producers can use that will help them cal calculate emissions based on weather data that they will get directly from their zip code and the number and size of animals. So if you have a farm with let's say 4,000 pigs and you have a certain zip code, you enter all of that information, including the size of the pigs, and it spits out the total ammonia emitted per day basis or on a per year basis. Uh, we don't know what the EPA will do, if someone is in violation of the Clean Air Act, we'll have to see what happens. So if you want more information on the EPA names, uh, then uh, please go to this EPA website. You'll find more information in there. Let me talk about exhaust air treatment at the European Union. So the European Union has a new a common agricultural policy from 2023 to 2027, which incentivizes agricultural air quality in different ways. And so this facilitates uh, application of exhaust air treatment in livestock barns to a greater extent. You also have regulations and incentives that vary by country. Say for example, if you are in the Netherlands and you want to open a finishing swine farm, then you have to agree that your older emissions will not exceed a certain value before you are allowed to start production. Now in, in the European Union countries, uh, a lot of the barns have um, exhaust plenums through which they exhaust all of their uh, stale air. And that facilitates application of whole house treatment systems that I will discuss later. In the US, we do not have a system of exhausting stale air through plenums. We just release them into the atmosphere. So the first one that I want to share with you is the scrubber or the whole house scrubber. As you can see in the top right, you have a house which has a plenum, which you cannot see but the plenum empties into the structure, which is the treatment structure. And inside the treatment structure, you might have, let's say, three filter pads, one for dust, another one for ammonia, and the third one for odor, using water, acid, or water to reduce dust, ammonia, and odor levels. And so you can have removal efficiencies greater than 75% for all three of these, pollutants. You also have one to two stage systems where you might just have ammonia and dust or just ammonia. And I would categorize this system as being expensive because you need to have a system for the whole house and this is uh, uh, looks quite pricey. The next one that I want to talk about is chimneys. Chimneys only provide dilution. They do not provide any treatment. They will reduce odor in the vicinity, let's say up to a thousand feet. 
And if you look at the price, uh, I got this price for, from Big Dutchman's uh, representative in Michigan, and that was $2,500 for a 7,500 CFM unit. Uh, I think that uh, chimney ventilation systems or chimney discharge systems are more feasible for the lower ventilation rates. Uh, once you get into warm weather or hot weather ventilation rates, uh, it may not be feasible to use chimneys. You'll need just too many of them. And of course, you have to think about hurricanes and tornadoes, especially in this part of the country. And I would consider them to be moderately expensive. This is my best professional judgment. And here I show you a chimney uh, scrubber combo. And so I would consider this to be an expensive system where after treatment, the air is then released through chimneys up into the atmosphere where they're diluted. You also have dust filters that are being used in the European Union countries. These are placed upstream of exhaust fans and they can remove up to 55% of the dust. Pressure drop is about 0.1 to 0.12 inches, which I would say is uh, reasonable, uh, but you would require to clean the, you, you would be required to clean these every four to eight weeks. And as you can see on the left, you have uh, quite an intricate design that lets the air in and then by inertial action, the dust gets trapped and the air and some of the dust leaves through a side hole. And uh, it's made by a uh, big Dutchman and it's known as Stuffnix. Let's talk about some current exhaust treatment options in the US. Uh, this is an acid scrubber that was developed by the USDA ARS. What they have in this is you have this system attached to a fan in this case, that was a 36 inch fan. And so first you have uh, inclined wooden slats with water flowing up, up, uh, down and that, cyst, that component traps the dust. And then you have the second component, which is also the wooden slat, but this time you have an acid solution which traps ammonia. And so the pressure drop is about 0.12 inch, inches, which is quite low at 6,000 CFM which for a 36 inch fan seems really low. And ammonia removal is about 75% at 6,000 CFM. And I would consider this to be an expensive uh, uh, proposition because you'd have to have multiple units if you wanted to treat multiple fans in a house. The next one is to use electrostatic precipitation. Uh, what you essentially do is you charge the air with high voltage, high DC voltage, but very low current for safety. And when you do that, uh, the dust gets charged and then it gets attracted to grounded surfaces and it settles down. And as it settles down, it also removes uh, the gas and the microbes. And so you have better air quality. You can use this system both for indoor air treatment as well as exhaust uh, uh, reductions. And there's one study out uh, that, that shows the system on your right, and that was shown to reduce dust by about 50% and odor by about 30%. It's a low power consumption system that uses very little, uh, that uh, imposes very little pressure drop on the fan, which is very important. And I would consider this system to be about moderately expensive. On the right, you see uh, the system in place. And what you can't see is electrodes installed on the fan cone. And as the air passes, it gets charged and the dust then attaches to the screen. Let's talk about vegetative environmental buffers. These probably were among the first exhaust air treatment systems that we had in the US. Uh, in this, you have dust resistant shrubs followed by trees, let's say placed about 20 feet from the fans. And the VEBs then will help trap the dust as well as dis uh, disperse uh, the plume. And in doing so, it will reduce emissions. But at the same time, 
It also shields emission sources and that reduces the perception of odor. So if you look on the lower right, you see the tree that interacts with the volatile organic compound plume. You can see how it disperses that plume. And below it, you'll see another image of how the plume would spread laterally if there was no tree. And that would then cause odor in the neighborhood. VEBs can reduce odor emissions by about 50%, as well as dust emissions. Uh, their performance will de depend, and it varies widely based on environmental conditions. It has only minor impact on fan performance if you install it correctly, but you do require uh, time for it to establish, and then it also requires maintenance. Uh, please note that this is federally approved for NRCS cost share. It may or may not be approved in your state, but it is federally approved. And I would consider this system to be low cost. Next, uh, next let me talk about the windbreak wall vegetative filter strip system that we've been working in North Carolina for the past couple of years. This is a simple system consisting of a lumber frame covered with mosquito skin, and you cover your exhaust fans with it. You do see some openings at the bottom so that if you have excessive dust buildup and pressure, that still acts as pressure relief. And then you screen that opening with uh, switch grass or, other, some, or some other resistant vegetative strip material. And you can see the, that the uh, front screen is about three to fan, three to four fan diameters. Uh, it acts both by diluting as well as trapping. So it traps the dust. And as far as dilution is concerned, as the screen picks up dust in front, more of the air will pass out through the top as well as the sides. You would need a bigger system for poultry than you would with swine because of down as well as more dust. It's a low pressure system. It, uh, pressure typically won't exceed 0 0.05 inches of water column. It's also federally approved for NRCS cost share. I would consider this to be a low cost system as well. Uh, here you can see uh, the windbreak walls, vegetative filter strip installed uh, on the swine farm on your left. Uh, it treats about 50,000 CFM, built in 2016, still run, running. The one on the right is the uh, system on the poultry farm that treats 100,000 CFM. Uh, with this level of dust, the static pressure was 0 0.045 inches, and it was built in 2021. Uh, we could not quantify the benefits of switchgrass. And uh, truth be told, I could never uh, get the switchgrass to survive on the poultry farm because it also got mowed down several times. But you do need to plant it annually. The swine system cleans readily with rainfall, and the poultry system requires a little bit of help. Uh, for the windbreak wall order measurement, we use the nasal ranger. We compared order in front of the test. Uh, fans as well as the control fans, the wall covered versus the uncovered fans, and we used dilution to threshold 20 feet from the fan. So dilution to threshold of 60 would mean 60 parts of the uh, uh, air is pulled in through the carbon filters and one part through the tiny hole over here. And if you can detect an odor, then you reduce the DS slash day until you can. And so we had four people doing the measurements and the reduction was the difference in the uh, D slash T divided by the control D slash T. So some results at the swine house based on eight events with little to no switch grass, we had a reduction of about 58%, 58 which I would consider to be effective at 20 feet. In the broiler house, uh, we monitored for nine events. We are still monitoring at both sites. We didn't have any switch grass. Reduction was about 31%. And you can see we had more variability. It was less effective because we had more dust on the screen. And you have a strong odor sensation very close to the nasal ranger when you have wind blowing parallel to the 
houses. And typically that wouldn't be an older problem. We also were able to demonstrate significant ammonia trapping. We placed ammonia in petri dishes, 5, 10, 15, and 20 feet from the fans. For an hour, the 5, 10, and 15 feet petri dishes were inside the screens. And we also did it on the control fans. And as you can see in the figure over here, in the, in the test petri dishes, in the three that were inside, we trapped much higher amounts of ammonia than we did outside, which tells us that we are trapping more ammonia. Only that, this may be a short-term fix. We need a longer-term fix. We'll have to figure out what to do with all of the ammonia that we are trapping over there. Probably most of it is converting to nitrate. So we also have another broiler house start windbreak wall that we just installed on the 19th of this month. And you can see the modeling part. And as you can see, uh, the air coming out of the fan attaches to the screen of the tarp and moves up and is diluted. But you also have all of this roughness as well as over here that causes the dust to settle out. Uh, the tarp is three fan diameters from the fan. And the system is 27 feet wide, 11 feet, 11 and a half foot wide and treats 548 inch fans. The top four foot can lower under high winds. So it's held together by in place with magnets and we'll present results later. And finally, I'd like to close. Uh, our producers should pr uh, prepare for contingencies, both regulation as well as litigation. We should consider uh, indoor air treatment first because that's where we can uh, improve the welfare and health of workers as well as chickens or any livestock and then only on exhaust air treatment. So we do have some exhaust air treatments that are compatible with US barns and relatively affordable. And there may be NRCS cost share money that may be available. So with that, I'd like to end. Thank you.